welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Join me now to discuss the situation in Ukraine's transportation industry is the former Minister for Infrastructure and current advisor to the current Minister of Infrastructure, Mr. Andriy Povarsky. Mr. Povarsky, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you. Good afternoon. So, Mr. Povarsky, uh, when we spoke to you last time, which was a couple of months ago, um, you were discussing your desire to leave the ministry. Uh, now, when the new cabinet was appointed and the new minister was appointed, you, we find you find yourself back in the ministry as, as, as an advisor. So why did it happen? Well, it, it's, it's a natural process. Uh, the, the current minister, Volodya Omelan, and I um, have been working together for a year and a half. And uh, when I stepped down, uh, naturally, uh, Volodymyr asked me if I wouldn't mind becoming his advisor. Uh, and uh, without a pay, without an office, without an uh, anything, but uh, just a guy who he can call and ask uh, questions if questions arise. So basically, um, you're volunteering so I'm, for the new minister. Yes, exactly. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm looking for a new job. This is not my permanent position or anything. So I'm looking for a new job. I'm very actively, and uh, I gave myself uh, time until the end of May to figure out what's going to be the next big move, and uh, most likely in June. Uh, I will we can make expect a an, an announcement from you. Exactly. So, Mr. Povarsky, can we talk a little bit about your work? Um, you were in the office for quite some time. You uh, struggled to make some of the reforms. You started some of the reforms. What would you say were your greatest achievements in the position of the Minister for Infrastructure? Well, deregulation in the, in the ports was one of the... Uh, most interesting reforms that we not only started but we completed pretty much. We removed quite few historical schemes that prevented our ports from being competitive in the uh, interna international arena. So the, 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 uh, as a result it takes as much time to process a container in the uh, Ukrainian seaport as anywhere else. It takes the same time to process a, a vessel in the Ukrainian ports as in Antwerpen, for instance. So 10 to 15 minutes, historically it was hours and required unofficial payments to state officials. Uh, secondly, uh, we completed the first uh, phase of the Ukrzaliznica reform. We corporatized the legal entity, we changed the corporate structure, that allowed for the introduction of a new CEO who was selected on a competitive basis, who was a foreign national, a very successful manager for Poland. And uh, uh, before I joined the ministry, it pretty much wouldn't be possible, even legally, to do that. So we created the opportunity for a competitive pay for the new CEO. And we prepared the platform for the further steps in reforming Ukrzaliznica, which is an integral part uh, of the Ukrainian economy. Uh, we started the reform of Ukravtador, but you need to understand that all of these reforms are long term. In order to break up Ukravtador, we had to adapt the concept, which we did. It's a five year concept. And it took us almost nine months to do the inventory of assets. So on the 1st of April of this year, uh, Ukravtador finished the inventory of all assets in order to go along the strategy. So it took nine months. It took since mo six months to formulate the reform, nine months to do this, that, and that. So um, most likely the, 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 the result of my efforts will be felt even probably after Volodya Melan leaves the office and the next minister comes. But as a result of the reforms that we started, uh, uh, residents of the Lviv Oblast, ivano Frankovsk Oblast can already enjoy new roads. The situation there is changing and this year it will change significantly. So basically you laid some, some groundwork exactly. for, for future exactly. reforms. Uh, Mr. Borowski, can we now talk about the you know, uh, Ukraine railways now that you mentioned it and uh, the, the big news which came in uh, just last week that the new CEO was appointed a uh, crisis manager from, from Poland, uh, Mr. Balchun. Do you think that given all the realities in Ukraine, given the still highly corrupt uh, government and highly corrupt officials in, in the government who uh, are trying to, to, to leave 
the loopholes in the legislation, in, in, in various regulations for further corruption, they will allow him to move forward with the reforms and do the groundbreaking reforms. Or this will be just yet another example of yet another attempt to do the reforms. Look, I disagree with your statement of the highly corrupt government and government well, officials. There are people in the government who are corrupt. Are and if, we to, if we look at the example of Mr. In the civil Mr. service. Mr. Uh, Abramovich, who, is, who uh, directly accused the MP, who is closely connected to the president, uh, in, 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 in pushing uh, him to appoint certain individuals as his deputies. That is corruption. Look, the, the uh, independent agency will have to figure out if there was pushing or not. Uh, I'm not going there. But you need to differentiate between the government, the Verkhovna Rada, civil servants, local bureaucracy, etc. When I meant the government, I didn't mean the cabinet ministers. I meant the government in general. In general. In, general, in broad terms. I believe that Mr. Balchun can be extremely successful in, this posi in his position because he's done turnaround in Poland very successfully. And he will be successful as long as there is no sabotage internally in USAT. Uh, if he's capable of bringing a new team of people, we prepare the framework for him to operate within. So if he's capable of bringing new people and he can offer a competitive compensation to those people, we provided this opportunity. If he changes the top management, the top people, he will be extremely successful. If he cannot, he cannot be a sole ranger. It's impossible. So if he has to operate with the old folks, he will not be successful. And the government has nothing to do with that. It's up to him to change the people inside because the way we structured the corporate governance system there, the CEO and the board can do pretty much anything they want. How much of dependence is, uh, for, well, between the Ukraine railways and, and the parliaments, uh, will they need to implement some legislative changes yes. in order to go forward with the reforms? Yes, exactly. Well, that's, that's a good point. That's when that's the, a good the, point. the, 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 the uh, deadlock might happen. The new CEO can be successful in finding efficiency uh, inside the existing, existing system. But in order to move forward with UZ, to take it to the next level, uh, we need to adopt two very important laws, the new law on the uh, railway system and the new law on the creation of an independent tariff setting agency for transport. Without those two laws, uh, Mr. Balchun will be successful to a certain degree. Because without those two laws, there's still going to be a debate about why the tariff has to be increased or not and how to increase it and how much money USAT really needs for infrastructure improvements to subsidize passenger traffic. And the second point, uh, without the new law on the railway system, uh, USAT will still be a, a closed monopoly in certain areas that can be competitive. The locomotive market can be competitive. The locomotive repairment and wagon repairment market can be competitive uh, without undermining the uh, competitive edge of UZ. But without the law, it's impossible to do. And uh, I really hope that the deputies support the new CEO and uh, adopt those two laws. Uh, they were prepared not by me. They were prepared by the best top experts in the world. The laws are quite good already. And, uh, of course, there can be discussion about minor things here and there, but those two laws are extremely important for USA to move forward the way Naftogaz move, moved forward. Yeah, well, we'll see whether uh, the, um, the new CEO has enough support from the MPs. Uh, Mr. Poworski, another area which I would like to discuss with you, uh, and this is something we discussed with you during our very first interview, the, the Open Scars Agreement. Um, just recently, the newly appointed minister said that he would push the EU to, to open the skies mm -hmm. um, uh, for, 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 uh, to, to allow uh, this agreement to, uh, to take it to be implemented in full force and in fact. Do you think this will happen? And uh, what are the current obstacles why this hasn't happened so far? 
This is a purely internal issue of the EU. Uh, actually, not only Ukraine suffers from not having this agreement, uh, the situation between Spain and the UK uh, is because of Gibraltar creates certain issues in, inside the EU that prevent the EU market from opening up more and more. Uh, it's a political debate exclusively of the EU nature. Uh, we can so only provide... Ukraine is a hostage we can, we in are, this situation. Uh, to a certain degree a hostage and we can only provide constructive pressure. And that's what I've been doing, and that's what Volodymyr will continue doing. We'll continue push it, pushing in a constructing matter. Uh, but at the same time, the ministry will continue liberalizing Sky unilaterally, bilaterally, I would say, with different European countries. By the way, isn't, wouldn't that be an easier approach? Because uh, basically uh, you, you enter into agreements with separate countries. You don't need like all 28 countries. I think uh, five, six, up to 10 countries. And there you have. You have the, all the low costs which are incorporated in these, in, well, major low costs who are, which are incorporated in these countries. You enter into agreements and there you go. We started this process last year. But the EU Commission asked us not to push too much with the bilateral negotiations because the agreement was expected to come anytime soon, sort of. So we made an announcement, we sent letters to our bilateral partners across Europe uh, and we slowly but surely started talking to uh, some of the European countries and several countries have agreed to liberalize completely, just remove all barriers. Uh, but at the same time, the EU Commission asked us not to rush too much because the signing was about to come. And uh, I think uh, Volodymyr and his uh, team, they will continue working on the bilateral front. At the same time, they will continue providing constructive criticism and pushing the EU to sign the Open Sky Agreement. Well, we'll have to ask uh, the minister himself. We're talking to him very soon. Mr. Povarsky, many thanks for finding the time to come and talk to us and uh, share your um, valuable thoughts about the situation in the Ukraine transportation industry. Uh, we were discussing the current situation in Ukraine's transportation industry, Ukraine's railways, and the Open Skies Agreement with the Foreign Minister of Infrastructure, Mr. Andriy Povarsky. I'm Vladimir Rosolhub. Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.